and thank you everybody for joining us on the Conscious Life Expo podcast. My name is Melanie, and today we have an amazing speaker with us. Master Clarice Chan is a respected feng shui advisor and author from Singapore, whose wide spectrum of metaphysical gifts include tarot, Chinese astrology, and Taoist ritual blessings. So before we discuss the workshop, the panel, the book, and the post-conference, let's introduce Master Clarice Chan. Thank you for being with us today. How are you doing? Hello, Melanie. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank you for these opportunities. You know, I'm very glad to be here. Yes, and I'm really looking forward to uh, Conscious Life Expo next one. I'm kind of like trying to get a little bit together every day as we head close uh, to my departure date from Singapore. Yes, definitely. It's going to be an amazing event and it's going to be great to meet you as well as many others. And so let's talk about you and how you got started and uh, a little bit, just a bit more of how you got into the wide spectrum of healing and metaphysics that you do. Right. Um, in my other lifetime, I was a travel agent. So, um, and life was uh, really hectic and um, stressful. And I got sick in the process of that. And at that time, in Singapore, you're talking about 1997, there's not a lot of uh, healing modalities uh, available. Um, and, but after I had my surgery and I woke up, I said, I don't want this life anymore. I don't want the red rays. Um, so I decided to look at the whole street side of life. Um, better with a friend. And from there, I um, journeyed the Reiki, I did uh, uh, body part healing, and I also discovered uh, almost about the same time that I could read the tarot intuitively. So I started doing readings for friends and all that, and they all come back uh, and tell me, oh, you know, that's pretty accurate, and you know, you should do this, um, you know, professionally. So that's what really like started me on. I started with the tarot. I started with um, doing healing for myself, and then I trained to be a Reiki master. And then I somehow it just grew, and I went into feng shui because I shared a shop with a friend, and um, they were feng shui masters. So I was living and breathing feng shui every day, anyway. And it's also part of my culture. And from then on, um, I can look back. I started writing uh, what I had the opportunity for uh, writing columns for um, magazines here in Singapore. And some of them were being circulated in other countries. And later on, I, I had um, clients from around Asia. And then a friend of mine uh, who does um, expos asked me. I would be interested to do expos around the world. So I said, yeah, sure, let's try it, you know. So I actually started off um, with London and then uh, Australia and New Zealand and the went A. And I did that from about 2014, but I got a little bit, you know, it got all got a little bit hectic. I had met trying to uh, uh, maintain your business in Singapore, your friends in Singapore, and then running around the world, you know, all year round. Um, then I decided that um, I'm just going to go to one place, and I'll do that every year. Um, and um, it was the LA Conscious Life Expo. Yes, amazing. And tell us about your your past experiences at the Conscious Life Expo. Oh, it was very interesting. Um, I met a lot of very interesting people. Uh, it was all, um, it's very different now from what it was. I started doing Conscious Life Expo in 2015. And I offered my service uh, of uh, reading, personal body, reading, Chinese astrology, that is, and numerology, and also the tarot. So um, I met a lot of wonderful people, um, other um, vendors, you know, 
you know, light workers. I enjoy the whole experience of it. And uh, of course, I get the opportunity to, um, uh, to also give a lecture every year. Uh, so that is exciting. Um, and I, got to, I get to also present my book uh, that I write and publish every year. Yes, and let's talk more about your book, Guide to the Yang Wood Dragon Year. That is going, yes. that's going to be amazing. That's a beautiful cover, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. That's going to be um, the book awards. So if anybody wants to vote for her book, please go to the Conscious Life Expo book awards link, which is going to be attached and you can vote for her book. So can you share with us more about your book, please? Okay, so I write a book um, every year since uh, 2007. So this is like my 17th year yeah. of writing. So the second time I'm writing about the, the dragon. The last time was in 2012, that was the Yang Water Dragon. And now um, it is 2024, and that is the Yang Wood Dragon. So now the Yang Wood Dragon um, as a zodiac uh, will only begin. I will begin on the 4th of February uh, at a specific time at uh, 1627. Now, um, that is slightly different from the Chinese New Year, which usually we celebrate at the, start, the beginning of the Zodiac Week. So sometimes, because the, um, uh, the way the Zodiac uh, sign word is we use the solar calendar and then Chinese New Year uses the lunar calendar. So there's always a crossover. Sometimes uh, the zodiac uh, of the year uh, arrives early and sometimes it arrives in the middle of Chinese New Year. So at least uh, in 2024 it will arrive earlier. The so Chinese New Year starts from the, uh, the 9th of February, which is Chinese New Year Eve. And then the zodiacal year of uh, the dragon will arrive on the fourth February. So now it's very interesting and very important uh, to understand that uh, for babies who are born uh, in 2024, they don't, they are not, uh, they do not belong to the dragon sign at the beginning of the year, like January one, um, or they do not begin. Uh, to become a, neither do the baby. Um, I mean, I'm talking about other years, for example, when the Chinese New Year is earlier. Sometimes it can be January. Um, but the Zodiac year will be much later, which is usually between the third and the fifth of February. And precisely this year is the fourth of them. And the baby, only babies that are born on um, the date. Of, and time that the um, and that the year dragon enters into the year will the, are the babies that truly belong to the year of the dragon. So for this year, only babies born on the fourth of February after sixteen twenty seven p.m. are the young wood dragon babies. Babies born before that will belong to the rabbit year. Wow, that's fascinating. That's that's amazing. And tell us more about your free workshop that is writing the dragon year, which of course that's going to bring a lot of attention. And that would be on Saturday. The February Saturday, 10th. February 10th. And that's a free workshop at 6 p.m. in the Marina room. I cover um the what to expect in the year of the dragon, uh, and also the uh, how the zodiac signs will uh, perform in the year, as well as feng shui uh, for the specific year. So um, that's all very exciting, and uh, people can uh, really enjoy it in my experience uh, from the previous. Yes, yes. And what else can you tell us about Chinese New Year or the Year of the Dragon? Well, Chinese New Year, um, actually, uh, Chinese New Year Eve uh, begins on the 9th of February. Well, it's on the 9th of February. 
uh, and the first day of China um, is the true celebration. So that begins about uh, the midnight, and uh, there are several activities that people follow, like um, traditionally they will have a reunion dinner or dinner for it's like Christmas Eve to gather together on a Christmas Eve, for example. It's the same for Chinese New Year. But of, uh, but of course, Chinese New Year, uh, we have um, traditions like go visiting and um, we give oranges, which is symbolically um, oranges are like gold, uh, auspicious um, items uh, that, we, that we bring to exchange with our friends and family on the day of Chinese New Year. And then um, there's a lot of visiting basically on that day. But uh, one of the activity that I promote or uh, is the first uh, because everything about Chinese New Year um talks about auspicious timing. So um the first moment you step out of the house is very important. So in my book, I actually mentioned the direction and the hours that you should leave your house so that you can step you know, into the right direction at the right time, and that will bring for, um, you know, a better or a more suspicious year for yourself. Thank you. And what can you tell us more about feng shui and what you have discovered along the way in helping so many people? Well, feng shui is about our environment, how we uh, manage ourselves in your not only in your external environment and also in your living environment. It's about arranging it's about you know uh, working with the elements around you as a chi by um, you know um for example placing your work desk in the right direction that is favorable to you so that you can gain more um, good opportunities. And the beds, and at home, of course, you're talking about arranging furniture uh, to your advantage so that you can gain better health, relationships, and also at work. And of course, eventually, you talk about true success. So, all that is, you know, uh, part and part of both choice uh, selecting the right house for you, selecting the, the right furniture. Um, having the right placement within the house and so that the energy flows through your house um, or your environment uh, positively and you can tap into the uh, benefits of uh, the function. Yes, yes. And that's going to be in the post-conference, correct? The feng shui blessings. Monday. Uh, no, actually the feng shui blessings is uh, slightly different. That um going to be covered in uh the riding the dragon because it's telling you how to um how to make use of the energy of the year of the dragon by um having certain um but by working with your environment and using colors, using ornaments, um and also um I mean possibly you know um doing certain activities to increase your energy. Now, but the post conference is a personal blessing. So you, you actually get to um if if uh, audience have actually been to the uh, conscious life expo last year, then um I did the uh, at the opening I did social blessing. So that's actually a Taoist ritual that we use energetically, just like you use like in meditation or, or in healing, you use, you know, you work with the energy um, to benefit the person. And that's what I do using um, the, uh, the feng shui energy or the Taoist uh, ritual energy to energize the, uh, the individuals so that they can have uh, better clarity, uh, better health and uh, positivity in their life. 
Right. And I also hear that it will also elevate your spiritual journey with personalized third eye enhancement activation. And that's right. Yes. Because this particular uh, blessing, because I have many that blessing rituals, but this particular personal blessing um, that I do will be activating the third eye. So that will come uh, your spiritual, spiritual journey, uh, if that is what you seek. Right, and what should someone expect when they show up? Oh, okay. They would, would expect um, an introduction of the, the topic as well as the meditation process and personal healing. Because it's not just about activating the third eye. It's about enhancing the energy, the third eye's energy so that it can, you know, expand your personality, your aura, so to speak. Your, your own view. And uh, also, if uh, there are people that have certain, um, that need certain healing to various parts, different parts of the body, I can work with that as well during the personal session. Lovely. Thank you. And again, that's going to be the Feng Shui Blessings on Monday, February 12th, 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And that is going to be a post-conference event for anybody that is interested. And let's talk about the panel that you're going to be. Mystical Visions. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mystical so Visions. That, yes, that's right. So that's uh, everything is happening on the Friday. And that's at 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, um, and I will be on the, uh, the panel with other experts, and that's very exciting. And it's the first time I'm going to be on this panel, so um, really looking forward to it. But just coming back a little bit uh, about Monday, the post conference. After the uh, uh, post conference, I'm going to be doing personal reading um, on the mezzanine floor, and we have a group for that. Afternoon. So if people are interested, uh, they can also come and see. Yes, yes. And also, don't forget about the book signing that's going to take place after your event. Um, um, that is on Saturday after the uh, Ride the Dragon uh, workshop. It's going to be at 7.45 p.m. Uh, to 8.15 p.m. at Table 1A. I believe it's also on the Netherlands. I believe it's also on the Netherlands. Yes, yes. Be sure to make that right after your event on Saturday, February 10th. And to cover more about the panel, that looks very interesting. It looks like you're going to explore the ancient and mystical practices that have been employed throughout history to gain insight into the future. And that is going to be moderated by Susan Slaughter. And so what else can we expect at that panel? I think uh, because it is the first time I've been there, uh, I'm you know, I'm really excited. I think I, my, the other panelists will be sharing about, uh, about uh, their experience and also there will be discussions on different modalities. And for myself, you know, I hope to be able to share a little bit more about Chinese astrology and maybe, you know, the time can be to talk about, you know, the tarot or even the astrology. So that's the basic the things that I'm going to be talking about and of course they talk to about mystic rich mystic uh, uh is it mystic, what did you say earlier mystical practices then I think the um uh, the Chinese uh or the Taoist uh, rituals uh will come okay. also yes that's gonna be a great panel and discussion with many others uh, other speakers that are going to be there. So do not miss that uh, Friday, February 9th at 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Is there anything else that you would like to share about your workshops or post-conference that is important for us to know today? Um, okay, for the writing, the driving is important because everyone wants to know how uh, they are going to tap into the positive energy of uh, each year. So in this workshop, I'll share about uh, how the year is going to, the dragon moon is going to affect us. Like it's the young earth, oh, sorry, it's the young wood dragon. And the young wood uh, is like a big old tree and then uh, a big tree. So it, uh, it's upward. 
scroll is annual mix and it's part of the universe. And then the dragon of part of the it belongs to the earth elements, but it's kind of like a big earth energy. So we see that as uh, like a mountain range, like you see the, the flow of the, you know, you see the, the outline of the mountain. So that is almost like the shape of a dragon child, the body flows. So you look at, you know, uh, the wood standing on top of the mountain. So it's like, it's a very, it's not just one tree, so you're talking about a lot of trees. So you're talking about, um, you know, a very strong and dynamic wood, but it's also, uh, because wood peers into the earth, so you also talk, uh, we also symbolically see next year as a year of um, change with some un unexpected um, changes in the world economy, the way it lives, and our um, mentality. Um, the other thing about um, the, young, uh, the young wood dragon is um, that it will bring for, it's the start of a new season. Because the last six years we've been having, uh, we, went in, we were in a uh, season of water, but now we went into a season of wood. So there will be a lot of growth and changes. Um, I would also like to talk about um, the, the information comes from those. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really uh, trying to get it all together. Oh, yes, feng shui wise, we are also. Along with the dragon here, we are entering um, a period of 20 years known as period nine. So, you know, conscious life and all of us, which is personal growth and so forth. This is very interesting because the period eight, which uh, was from the, uh, the year 2004 up to 2023, we are right on the brink of period nine. Because it will be seen on February the fourth. That's the interesting thing. We talk about the change over of the uh, the zodiac sign from one to another. So rabbits to dragon. That that will be happening for the surface. Now, um, period nine uh, is um, period. No, let's start with period eight. Period eight was uh, more focused on um, things that are material. Yeah, the property, you know, the uh, most uh, like think for example, the property trade kind of uh, the property market kind of grew and went through a lot of changes, and people are more focused in to getting the material things in life, and because Series Eight uh, represents um the uh. The, in the in changing is what is it is it's in the book the in the book of change. So we talked about a uh, little uh, the hexagram. So the hexagram of the eating actually talks about young men in the period. But now so you see a lot of young men rising up uh, or rather being very successful at a very young age in the last 20 years. But what is interesting is from period nine, which is probably the first, it's going to switch its attention to uh, women. So you will see a lot more women um, coming up and being more successful and dynamic and prominent in the next 20 years because the teaching hexagram that actually describes the next. 30 years is the new childhood, which, oh, which talks about women. And also, uh, it is a period of fire, fire energies. So, that the fire energy, the fire doesn't have a shape, right? It kind of burns. And in a sense, it is kind of like it can be elusive, it can be, um, so. 
but it's also enthusiasm, it's also uh, the skill for the economy. So in this new period that we are coming to, people will be more focused. The focus of the people will be so much on what is the material, but more into spirituality, which every type of thing, what we are doing. So, um, as, as, and there are other things apart from other fields apart to uh, spiritual work that is going to be go through a uh, you know a period of growth and uh, like the entertainment, uh, digital, uh, digital digital world. The cryptocurrency, the, the Bitcoin, all that are uh, kind of like, you know, yes, it's there, but it's not quite physical. Then, you know, uh, AI, so on and so forth, that's all going to go towards, you know, uh, enormous growth in the So for me, that's very exciting. Does your Chinese New Year, does that affect your feng shui? Um, because I know everybody's different and might have their own different auspicious and inauspicious dates and times, etc. So, how does that correlate together? Um, do you mean the zodiac sign or do you mean Chinese New Year itself? It's just as in general. Um, would that matter? Uh, depending on what year you were born. Uh, but uh, yes, it's a very good question. Okay, so next year is the year of the dragon. So um, there are a, there are a, a few signs that are affected by the ruling zodiac. So he's the king next year. He's the yeah, the wood dragon. So the signs that are actually affected are like the people born in the year of the ox dragon. Uh, dark and gold, and then uh, additionally, there's one one other sign. Uh, although it's not part of the main clashing uh categories, um, uh, is the rabbit. It's also going to be a factor. So if you're born in the year of rabbit, gold, ox, dragons, and dogs, that's going to be, you know, uh, can be a bit of a, a challenging year for them. It can be a year of change, but. But it's not all negative. Um, you know, they will still experience uh, growth, but they have to be more flexible. They have to look after their well-being. They have to be mindful, and to uh, they they are the signs that need to tread like uh, a little bit more. Um, what would I say? Keep a low profile rather than charging at very fast. Thank you. And so do you have any other predictions for 2024? 2024. Okay. Um, what would be a topic that you're interested in? What do you think the people would be interested in? Which area? Well, 2024, unfortunately, uh, because like I, I mentioned earlier on, it's two very strong energy. You have the wood and you have the uh, which is the yang energy and you have the the dragon which symbolizes like a mountain is also very strong. Unfortunately, it's going to have uh, a lot of strong new people standing their ground and not coming up to not going to be very flexible. So, which is why people who are who are zodiac signs that are like uh, they are in the cash clashing category, so to speak, according to the Chinese astrologers, they have to be a bit more flexible. And the economy, that's going to go through a lot of changes. The economy belonging to the uh, map industry, like you will see uh, better, uh, some industry will do better than others, but industry like uh, the metal. So you're talking about automobile, for example, industry, they're going to go through a lot of better. But of course, uh, would uh, the real estate uh, may not go through such a uh, prosperous time simply because the wood will be attacking uh, the earth, uh, which talks about the uh, uh, property sector in the trade. And then you have the fire energy. Uh, so I talked about the, 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 the fire energy earlier on. The fire is the fuel for the economy, it's enthusiasm. As there is wood around, the fire will burn, and therefore people will be more enthusiastic. 
they will uh, they will be more outgoing, um, and they will be more uh, what do you call that? Um, willing to uh, take a risk, so to speak, um, or enjoying themselves or be more outgoing. Then the economy is going to go through like uh, several fluctuations, but I think. Uh, it, it is to be patient and um, um, and not to be uh, and moderating their expectation when it comes to profits and gains. Yes, and how can we use feng shui or this new year for prosperity, health, and success? Well, uh, one of the um, ways to do it is to actually wear your favorite and your color. So um, for the year uh, 2024, you have wood, which is represented by the color of green, and in the mountain, it's earth tone. And so what is the, what are the auspicious colors for, for wood will be water, so you're talking about the color of blue, and then also you can use color like red and orange and purple, uh, of course, and also white and gold. These are some of the more favorable colors. But predominantly, you know, we we talk uh, just put them in three categories. We will say the emerald green, uh, imperial yellow, and red. Those are the uh, the good colors uh, to use. And are those colors for everybody? Um, mostly, yes. It can be used by everyone. Oh, okay. So because these are the auspicious colors of the year. Um, that's one interesting practice that uh we do during the uh changeover day on um uh, for for the zodiac sign, and that would be uh we feel that, or rather, the practice is that is the day you save money. That's the day you try to increase uh, the energy of your prosperity. And therefore, we tend to, um, well, in, in Southeast Asia, we use that day to put our, our, our money into the bank or into your safe. And my book has a, has a page whereby you, for each zodiac sign, what is the best money for you to deposit your money into the bank or to put it away into your safe? So that's something that we do on uh, February the 4th. So you can see long queues at the bank, long queues at the ATM machine. <laughs> I just put money into the space and symbolically, that's easier than rushing around. Yes. Yes. And that's going to be such a great lecture and event. And I'm looking forward to meeting you. And is there anything else that you're looking forward to at the Conscious Life Expo this year? I'm looking forward to, um, first of all, most I'm looking forward to meeting everyone, just to be there. And also uh, the um, opening ceremony, I'll be doing a Feng Shui blessing for uh, and a part of it. There will be other uh, presenters uh, at the uh, uh, opening ceremony and a part of that, that, um, that moment or, or that ceremony. And so I'll be doing a functional blessing uh, for uh, the opening of the expo, and then I hope that that will be uh, that will bring you know positive energy and abundance and prosperity for everyone. So, yes, it's going to be such a blessing, and I do remember the opening ceremony from last year. So that will be wonderful if anybody is your first time catching that. And let's talk about your website. Right. My website. Yes, my website is um in my name, so it's masterfully.com. So uh and I on my website I kind of offer my services, which is like feng shui, Chinese astrology, tarot, uh healing, uh ritual sequencing, rituals. So those are my main activities uh that I you know, that I often think for and then 
Sounds good. And do you have any social media where anybody can contact or follow you? Ah, uh, yes, I have. I mean, they are all in my professional name. It's Martha Perry Chan. So if you go on Facebook, if you, you know, you type in Martha Perry Chan, you will be able to find me. And that's the thing for them: Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and um, TikTok. Yes, we will get all of those social medias and your website. We will also have the link for the panel, the post conference, the book awards, and for the free workshop as well for anybody yeah. that would like to follow along and join your workshop, which we are all looking forward to. Thank you very much. Yes, and do you have any last messages for anybody that is also looking forward to your event? Um, well, I look forward to seeing everybody, and I think, and I feel that we should all come to the um, opening ceremony as I'll be as we will be as I'll be doing the um, blessing and also giving away. Uh, little tokens to uh, people uh, belonging to the catching fund, for example, you remember me doing that last year. Um, and um, and I'm looking forward to the mystical vision panels. So I hope that everyone, um, if you would like to find out more about uh, the different uh, oracles, you should uh, attend that. And of course, if you'd like to find out more about uh, the Dragon Year and also about the Feng Shui and get a personal um, a blessing uh, session, join me on Monday uh, at my post conference. Yes, we look forward to that post conference as well. So thank you very much for sharing. Thank you your journey and your story and all of the insightful information that is to come as well. So thank, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. It's great to be here with you. Yes, of course. We look forward to seeing everybody at the Conscious Life Expo this year and February 2024. And thank you for joining us on the Conscious Life Expo podcast. Thank you.